are y'all ready to hop into this strange story for today strange video strange story whatever like i'm gonna say video but whatever let's go ahead and hop into our strange video for today and let's see what crazy stuff is going on out here in the world or that's then happening out here in the world that we need to find out about that we need to know it's really not gonna make a difference if we know it or not but let's go ahead and watch this video okay and again it's your girl danny lovely you already know hey we're covering the case of tatsuya ichihashi a case known for its uniquely bizarre and disturbing details. When 22-year-old Lindsay Hawker traveled to Tokyo to teach English, it was supposed to be the start of an amazing adventure. Instead, it would turn into something so unimaginably horrific, it would become the subject of a best-selling memoir and later a movie. As for Lindsay's killer, his desperate attempts to avoid identification were so gruesome they'd earn him a near cult hero status. So prepare yourselves. This... It be really these girls out here falling in love or like liking these killers. It was another famous killer like in the U.S. or something. I forgot the name. I forgot who it was, but like had like a cult following and girls had was falling in love with him. Like actually liked him. You know, he was like a killer on traffic. It's the movie. disturbing story of Tatsuya Ichihashi. Before we start, we would like to send our heartfelt sympathies to the loved ones of Lindsay Ann Hawker, whose life was ended in such a savage and senseless way. This story takes us to Tokyo, Japan, a mega city of 35 million inhabitants, famous for both the ultra-modern and the traditional. Home to anime, manga, electronic megastores and more Michelin stars than London and Paris combined. Tokyo is a 24-hour metropolis that combines millennia-old traditions with futuristic... I know that light bill is through the roof. I know that light bill. <laughs> I just want to see what it looked like. I know it's crazy. Technology. Neon-lit skyscrapers <laughs> sit side-by-side side to historic temples. It was to the Itogawa Ward of Tokyo that 22-year-old Lindsay Hawker arrived in October 2007, ready to start her new job at the Tokyo branch of Nova, Japan's largest private English school. Lindsay was from a town near Coventry in Warwickshire, England, where she had grown up in a close-knit family with parents Bill and Julia and two sisters. Lindsay was known for her boundless enthusiasm for life, she was also bright and ambitious, graduating with a first-class honors degree in biology from the University of Leeds in the summer of 2007. After years of studying, Lindsay was ready for a change and made plans for a world trip with her boyfriend of four years, Ryan Garside. Lindsay would set off first, heading to Tokyo where she would teach English before her boyfriend would join her the following summer. Lindsay adapted fast to life on the other side of the globe. She made solid friends with her two roommates with whom she shared an apartment. Her employers at Nova said she put every effort into her new role. She communicated daily with her friends and family about life in Tokyo. In one email to her sisters, she described how the city of Tokyo felt safe and secure. Safer, in fact, than Britain. They were words that would later haunt her family. On the morning of March 25th, she packed her tote bag with her teaching materials and said goodbye to her roommates and left the apartment on her bike. She would never return again. On March 26, 2007 at 2.30 p.m., Lindsay's father received a call from a staff member at the Nova Language School. Lindsay had failed to turn up for her classes for two days in a row. Her roommates had already tried to contact police when Lindsay had failed to return home from work the previous evening, but the message had not been conveyed to the proper authorities within the department. Lindsay's family were distraught. Her father booked a flight to Tokyo for himself and Lindsay's boyfriend, Ryan. At Lindsay's apartment, officers tried to piece together Lindsay's last movements, both her roommates and her boyfriend Ryan had vital information to share, and all of it created a clear and chilling picture. 
Six days earlier, on March 20th, Lindsay had been traveling home on the train after drinks at a bar called Hippy Dippy Doo when a strange man approached her. He was several years older than her and claimed to be one of her students in her class. But Lindsay knew all of her students and he was not one of them. Lindsay had politely excused herself and exited the train at her station. She had almost arrived home on her bike when she suddenly spotted the man right behind her, jogging fast. He had tailed her all the way from the station and now pitched up on her doorstep. He asked again if she recognized him. Now, a little frightened, Lindsay repeated that she didn't. This time, he explained. See, that's when you uh, call the police. Like, this man is crazy. Are you kidding me? Like, she just said she don't recognize you. Obviously, you're lying because you're not really in her classroom. So, that's red flag. Number one, like, you're clearly a psycho and somebody that's been probably stalking or following her or something because, what? And, yeah, call the cops and uh, grab a weapon. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, well, I do know. Like, get him off that doorstep. You better stick him a couple times. The police better hurry up and get here and come pick him up. And that Tom he Christ. wanted to go abroad to study and was desperate for an English tutor. He then asked her for a glass of water. Thinking he was simply enthusiastic no. and maybe a little eccentric, Lindsay invited him into her apartment, where oh her roommates were God. both home. Inside, oh he sketched a picture of Lindsay and signed it with his name. You are too nice. Y'all do not be scared to come off mean to people. Sometimes, like, especially if it's your safety that could possibly be at risk. No, you can't have no water. Go home. Bye. You want to be thirsty. Like, this man already... Acting like he in your classroom, you know that he's not there. He following, running behind you while you're on the bike, following you home. <laughs> Tatsuya Ichihashi, a phone number and an email address. Officers now searched Lindsay's room, where they located the sketch the man had given her. Lindsay, her roommate said, had agreed to meet the man in a cafe for an English lesson. They had warned her against it. But Lindsay could see no harm in it, and on March the 20th had set off to meet him at the Duo Tour Cafe. It was the last time they'd see her. Lindsay's last Facebook message was written on March 20th and had said, Love you lots. Don't worry about the guy who chased me home. It's just crazy Japan. Miss you. Meanwhile, police had pulled grainy surveillance footage from the morning of the 25th of March 2007 at the Duo Tour Cafe near the station in East Tokyo. The footage captured Lindsay and the mysterious man named Ichihashi ordering drinks at the counter. Lin Hold on. I was thinking about that again. How does that sound? Don't worry about the man that chased me home. Don't worry about the man that chased me home. It's just crazy to me. What? Like, do some, do people be like hearing or it's like, they saw sometimes or like seeing the stuff that they wrote sometimes and not, it's something wrong with that. Like, you should be worried about the man that chased you home. What? what? <sighs> he appears to feel awkward, repeatedly pushing her hair aside. The pair sit together at a table for 50 yeah, minutes while Lindsay all. gives yeah, him a right. language lesson. When yeah, it's time to leave, Ichihashi four, makes exaggerated four, gestures four, of searching four, and failing to find his money. 10 a.m., the pair get up and leave and are seen getting into a taxi together. By 5.20 p.m. on the evening of March... And at this point, I'm calling her man. You, you see, like, you were spending too much time with this man. He do not need no English lessons for real. He's just trying to get close to you, girl. You know that, like... And it's turned out he's a psycho. Like, which is... Because he's not in your class. The sixth, two officers had located and arrived at Tatsuya's apartment in Ichikawa. The man who Lindsay had just gotten into a taxi with had, in fact, been watching her for months. 28-year-old Tatsuya Ichihashi lived alone in a three-bedroom apartment bought for him by his parents in the Chiba Prefecture, a suburban town east of Tokyo. 
The son of two wealthy professionals, his mother was a dentist and his father a brain surgeon, oh. Tatsuya hadn't inherited either his parents' ambition or academic ability. Under his parents' duress, he attended Chiba University and graduated with a major in horticulture in 2005. But he had Crazy. never worked in the field of horticulture and had spent the past two years living off of his parents' monthly allowance. Tatsuya found himself a girlfriend during his time at college, but those who knew him described him as a loner, someone known in Japanese culture as a hikikomori, or someone who suffers extreme degrees of social isolation. He was obsessed with violent manga and for several years had been displaying some troubling behavior. Two years earlier, he had assaulted a woman on a street while attempting to rob her. The woman had settled out of court with Tatsuya's parents. While at university, Tatsuya had been given a formal warning for stalking a woman. Oddly, his... See, now, this is where you gotta step in. Like, what's going on here? Because at the rate that this story is going, like, obviously the girl... He, he did something to the girl like she's not here anymore and like I feel so I feel bad for her family like especially as a parent like that's crazy like man you got you teach your kids growing up like stranger danger I don't know like do not ignore the warning signs do not ignore the warning signs like and also for his parents they know that man man he was saving down the dark path like he needs to probably be like in extreme extreme isolation that he's stalking women and assaulting women and trying to rob them now. He needs to go ahead and be locked up somewhere or something. Because look, look where it went. Like, he was already leading up to it. Like, and if obviously, from his parents' point of view as a parent, you're not going to want to send your kids to jail. Like, you're not going to want to send your, your kids, like, away to where they won't be able to live a life as a normal person. Like, you don't want to do everything you can to like i don't know like get them some help so that they can function as a like normal or like i don't even want to say normal because like it's like everybody consider, can, can consider different things to be normal not normal whatever but like as a decent human being of society so it's just messed up like on both both ends like it really is Girlfriend later described their relationship as stable and serious. She would visit him several times during his early years in prison. She said Tatsuya was obsessed with physical fitness and would spend hours each day working out at the gym and regularly cycling 15 miles a day. By 2007, however, there were signs that Tatsuya's mental health was deteriorating. He reportedly told acquaintances that he felt he was becoming unstable, but it's not clear whether anyone urged him to seek help. Instead, it seems, he developed a fixation with a random stranger, the young British English language teacher, Lindsay Hawker. According to police, Tatsuya had stalked Lindsay Hawker for several months before working up the courage to approach her on the train. See, that's what I said. He had to have been stalking her because how would he, and how do you not, like, see this? Like, because the, uh, 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 the first thing, he, well, he sit down and he talking to he like, I'm one of your students in your classroom. Hold on. How do you even know that I'm a teacher? Like, what are you talking about? How, how do you even know what I, what I do? First of all, you're not a student in my classroom. And how do you even know what I do, like, professionally to even pretend like you're even a student in my classroom? And then you stop being so nice. Stop being so nice, okay? It's okay if people think you, if you come off mean sometimes. Especially, again, if it's your life, like your safety, that could possibly be at risk. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, well, I just have to come off mean. I don't care. He spotted the logo for I the English care. language school on her tote bag and used it as an excuse to connect with her. He now used the excuse of having no money to lure her to his apartment in Ichikawa. It was a five minute drive away. Once outside, Lindsay asked the taxi driver to wait for her while she went in to collect the money. Seven minutes passed with no signs of Lindsay have, and the taxi driver drove away. He was the last person 
other Bring the than money her killer to, to see her yeah. alive. Once at Tatsuya's apartment, police waited outside for him to exit. They were not permitted by Japanese law to knock without proper cause. Knowing his previous allegations of stalking and robbery, they had called for backup. By 8 p.m., nine officers had assembled on both the ground floor and outside of his fourth floor apartment. Two hours after the last officers arrived, Tatsuya burst out of his apartment and headed down the building's fire escape. He was barefoot and carrying a rucksack. With several officers close behind him, Tatsuya evaded them by vaulting the last stairway to the ground and sprinting into the street. He was spotted once more by police officers, but once again evaded them by zigzagging through the street. It was the closest they would get to catching him for more than two years. Are you serious? As for the location of Lindsay, on the other hand, that would happen much sooner. On Tatsuya's balcony, police noticed a bathtub had been freshly filled with a mix of sand and compost. A potted plant stood next to the bath, as though he had left before having a chance to plant it. And Tatsuya had not quite finished his task. A small white hand protruded from the mixture in the bathtub. Neighbors would later say they heard a heavy scraping sound the evening before, undoubtedly the sound of Tatsuya dragging his bathtub onto the balcony of his apartment. Police uncovered Ooh, Lindsay. Oh, how are you just moving your tub like that? I don't know how stuff work out there, obviously, but like, and I've like seen like a videos of like tiny like apartments or spaces over there in that region, but How do you, so he, okay, because I'm assuming you, like, boil the water and just put it in the tub to take a bath, but. Okay. Naked body from inside the bathtub. She had been gagged with a scarf and her feet and hands had been bound with gardening ties. Bruising across her upper body suggested she had endured a savage and prolonged attack. Both Lindsay and Tatsuya had been trained in martial arts. Lindsay had fought off her attacker bravely, but she was no match for Tatsuya in strength. Egg-sized bruises on the left side of her face suggested that she had been struck repeatedly with a fist, while lesser marks on her upper body were likely the result of collisions with furniture. She had been and strangled so violently that the cartilage in her neck was broken. Her head had been shaved and her hair placed in a plastic bag. Her belongings were found strewn about the room. At 3 a.m. on March 27th, Lindsay's parents received the call no parent ever wants to receive. A body had been found. The trip they had booked to search for their daughter now became a journey to identify her remains. Her father, Bill, said that when he saw her, I knew it was Lindsay because she was so tall and because she was my daughter, but she was so badly beaten. My life, my soul, just fell from beneath me. Wanted posters containing images of Tatsuya now flooded Tokyo. Soon, 30,000 posters had been distributed nationwide. Some showed chilling pictures of Tatsuya in possible disguises, including the killer disguised as a woman. His images were broadcast across national and international news channels. Sightings of Tatsuya came pouring in from all over Japan. Multiple sightings placed him in Kabuki-cho, a red-light district of Tokyo. Police investigated every lead, but he could not be located. Soon, there were rumors that he'd escaped the country or quietly killed himself. Days turned into weeks and then months. By October 2008, 140 officers had been assigned to the investigation, but despite 8,000 reported sightings and widespread media coverage, police were no closer to finding Tatsuya. By the end of the year, the investigation was stalling. 
the desperate Hawker family launched a website appealing for information on Tatsuya Ichihashi's whereabouts. Tatsuya's parents, who had remained silent, now came under wrongful suspicion from the public. In response, his mother called a daytime television program and urged her son to give himself up. It's mom, Tetsuya, she said in an audio message. Dad and mom have decided to speak about our feelings, although we know you won't like this, she said before telling him to contact the police. Later, the couple appeared on television to apologize for their son's crime. In the lead-up to the second anniversary, police printed out life-size cardboard cutouts of Tatsuya to try to raise awareness among the public. The Hawkers returned to Tokyo to plead for information on their daughter's killer. Police increased the reward for information leading to his arrest from 1 million yen to 10 million what? yen, or the equivalent of about $121,000. Meanwhile, a far sicker interest in the fugitive had been blossoming. Online fan clubs had begun popping up all over the internet, glorifying Tatsuya as an outlaw and a fugitive People hero. Like, he became really? known as Japan's That's most so. handsome criminal, nicknamed it's the Fugitive now. Sullen Prince and Maybe Lord Ichi, go, and even gaining popularity with young males. Blogs and support groups opened up, dedicated to the murderer. What no one knew, of course, was that the appearance of the man police had been hunting had changed quite significantly in the two years since they printed his face on wanted posters across Japan. According to an account he later published in a best-selling memoir, Tatsuya had initially wandered around Tokyo with no money or credit cards and no passport that would enable him to leave the country, he hid out among the tramps in the Flophouse district of the Ibakari prefecture northwest of Tokyo. It was only when he saw his face plastered across wanted posters that he realized the scale of the manhunt. He took to living his life as a fugitive, covering his face beneath a hat, wearing glasses, avoiding surveillance cameras, and constantly staying on the move. He didn't contact a single friend or family member. But as the nationwide manhunt gained momentum, he turned to more drastic attempts to disguise his identity. He needed to change his appearance, he realized, and took on that task himself. Using a box cutter, he sliced the moles off of his left cheek, Ooh. markings that had struck him as particularly prominent in his wanted pictures. He then cut off part of his lower lip with scissors in an effort to make them thinner. His oh first attempt failed. Oh my god, the pain? No, uh uh, you just gotta turn yourself in. Oh my gosh, like, I'm just like, you really have to be gone in the head. Like, what? Oh my god when he was Ooh. unable to push through the excruciating pain. But he did finish the job a few days later in a public so bathroom. He then bound up his nose with a thread and needle to make it narrower. While his face healed, he wore multiple surgical masks. Traveling by train and bus, Tatsuya headed south, where he embarked on a pilgrimage of temples in the southwestern island of Shikoku. He wanted to atone for the killing, and when visiting shrines, he would pray for Hawker to come back to life, an idea he got oh, from a novel in happen. which the dead are resurrected after someone who is thinking of them tours those same temples. His paranoia over being recognized consumed him, driving him to seek out further changes to his appearance, this time with the help of a plastic surgeon, though for that he would need money. Using the name and address of a dead man called Kosuke Inoue, Tatsuya took a job at a construction company in Osaka, where he worked for the next 13 months, saving about 1 million yen. He spent most of the money on two cosmetic surgery operations, one to acquire a longer and narrower nose, and the second to raise the bridge of his nose. He gave false names and addresses at the clinics and failed to return for any follow-up appointments. 
Colleagues later said he rarely mixed with them, spending most of his time reading comics and watching videos in his room at the company's dormitory. He never removed his red cap or black-rimmed glasses in public. When he was persuaded to join the company bowling trip in April, he hid behind a colleague in a group photograph. We gossiped that he was an odd guy, but I never thought he was the suspect, a former colleague told the Yomiuri Shimbun newspaper. It occurs to me now that he was saving the money for cosmetic surgery. In the end, the attempts to obscure his identity were his undoing. Tatsuya visited a clinic in the southwestern city of Fukuoka in mid-October with a request to change the shape of his mouth. On October 24th, he visited a clinic in Nagoya, where he had his nose uplifted. But staff at the clinic were intrigued by the strange scars on his left cheek where he had removed his moles. They reported his visit to police and submitted multiple pictures of the man who had visited their clinic. Police identified the man as Tatsuya. On the 4th of November 2009, police released the images to the press, disclosing that he had undergone oh, plastic surgery. His new image was soon splashed all over the Japanese news. These images showed a very different Tatsuya Ichihashi. He was minus the two prominent moles on his left cheek. He had a thinner bottom lip, a higher bridge to his nose, and a double fold to his eyelids. Tatsuya wrote in his memoir that he froze when he saw the news on TV with his image. My heart raced, he wrote. I gazed at it trembling. He immediately got a haircut and bought a party disguise set, including a beard, sideburns, and mustache, and then headed to the ferry terminal at Osaka. On November 10th, 2009, moments before he was due to set sail for Okinawa, an island in Japan's far south, a passers-by gaze was drawn to a tall, suspicious-looking youth wearing a hat, sunglasses, and a paper surgical mask. More than two and a half years after he had become one of Japan's most wanted suspects, Tatsuya Ichihashi was arrested at the ferry terminal in Osaka for the murder of Lindsay Hawker. This has been a long, hard battle for the Hawkers. And the battle is over. We've worked tirelessly as a family. We've never given in for our daughter. We've never given in. We wanted justice, and we've finally got justice. I'll also just like That's to thank it. the Japanese police. After a very bungled start to my daughter's murder, they've got the man. They've worked tirelessly, and they've eventually got the man. And the chief officer told me they would get the man sooner or later. We're just so relieved that this part of our life is over. I can go down to my daughter's grave this afternoon and tell her. Thank you. I'd just like to say, you know, I'd like to echo what my parents have said. I hope, the also, the I hope that our like case um, kind of gives other families some kind of hope. Um, we thank the Japanese press, we thank the Japanese people, but really, it's us that have done this. We haven't given up, Love not it. from day one. All the sleepless nights, all the not eating, all the crying, all the tears, it's all been worth it now. And we've got what we wanted, which was justice for Lindsay. Kakoi, he's really cool, one blogger posted. When he was arrested, I thought his disheveled black hair and the line along his neck to his jaw made him look so sexy. Another side. Other fans explained their admiration for Ichiyashi with one writing. The son of physicians, he is tall. He has a lean, mean physique, a talent for illustrating, and can converse in a foreign language. Lindsay's distraught family pushed for Ichihashi to be executed through Japan's death penalty procedure. His lawyers, however, successfully argued that he should be kept alive based on the potential for him to be reformed. 
During his trial, Tatsuya admitted raping and killing Lindsay Hawker, but claimed he killed her by accident when he was trying to muffle her screams for help. He also said that he had attempted to resuscitate her and had called an ambulance, but no evidence has ever been produced to support that claim. According to prosecutors, he had beaten Lindsay shortly after she had entered the apartment and used tape to bind her while he raped her. In early 2011, Tatsuya published a book detailing his time on the run titled Until the Arrest. In the book, he skipped over the atrocities of his crime, the truth of what happened that morning, and his motives for killing an innocent woman, instead focusing on his adventures while as a fugitive, living in constant fear of arrest. The book went on to become a bestseller in both Japan and Britain. So much so, the story was turned into a film called I Am Ichihashi, Journal of a Murderer. On July 21, 2011, the Chiba District Court sentenced Ichihashi to life imprisonment for the murder of Lindsay Hawker. Lindsay's father said of the sentencing, we wanted justice and we finally got justice. Her boyfriend, Ryan Garside, said he had made plans to propose to the English teacher who had been the best thing in my life. If you found this story compelling, that is crazy. That really is. Y'all have to be careful going to these foreign countries, going anywhere. Period. Like even within your own like country, especially alone. Like that's crazy. And stop being so trusting. Stop. Stop being so nice. Like I hate to say it like that, but the world is not. It's 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 cold out here. Like no, but. Yeah, that was sad. That was uh, that's nothing that any parents have to go through for real. But thank you guys for uh, watching. This is our strange video for today. So yeah, I I will see you guys later. Bye.